Amberjacks are hunting depending the currents and the hour to find the bait fish. Whoa. They push away, but for Amberjacks is Capes like this that are close to the bottom. Oh, okay. This is a very good example. Come on. I prefer to stay there, really big packs. My God, come on. I love to stay there. Look, falling bottoms with lots of rocks. Yeah, also here in oh, okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And with this opportunity, I really need to thank you about the huge support you showed me on the last videos and you are keep going strong. Thank you very much for you that you have already subscribed. Uh, also, I hope that the rest of you will also join our really nice channel because it's not my channel, it's our channel. Uh, as you can see, I always reply on the comments and try to have a very good uh, connection with you anglers because this is exactly how we should be a big family. Having said that, as I promised, I'm going to share more of my knowledge and experience, my personal knowledge, I'm not saying that I know everything, but at least these small things I know about the sea I would like to share with you. So I, if I can make your fishing a bit easier, that would be the greatest reward for me. I did it in the last videos and I'm going to do it like one more time with uh, fish species. And uh, uh, when we talk about short jigging, let's start discussing about the king, the Amberjack. Amberjack, the undisputable fighter. A fish that will challenge even the most skilled anglers. For me, the Amberjack is one of the most representative fish for short jigging and uh, probably the most difficult. And uh, when I say most difficult, I don't mean making it strike. In general, Amberjacks are voracious feeders and they will strike relatively easy. However, <laughs> the hard part is to get it out because even a small Amberjack is extremely powerful and, uh, <laughs> and the contradiction is that most fish that bite easily are usually stupid and you can take them out uh, easy however amberjacks are really clever fish and if they knew how to manage their predatory instincts they would be also hard to strike but let's take things one by one in this Amberjack video.
What we were missing, Giuseppe? Or a number jack, eh? But it... number jack. And something is hunting it. Oh, no, other number jacks. You, you wanna cast it? Cast it. Yes. Jig. Okay. Whoa. Okay. I was keeping it for you. Come here, Amberjack. Whoa. Hoppa. About hunting hours, Amberjacks are really, really active the whole 24 hours of the day and that's crazy. It has happened many times to get Amberjacks during night. Of course, early morning hours and late afternoon hours are red uh, flags to focus, but <laughs> I personally like to get them in midday. And uh, it makes sense. I mean, many guys are going only in early morning or late afternoon to get them that, yes, they are active. But I go in midday for one very simple reason. Because in midday, the bait fish are more active and go near the surface to get some sun. And they start uh, eating and feeding. And that's one more time what Amberjacks are looking for. You might get in a really nice strike in early morning or late afternoon but believe me these are not the only hours of the day to focus for amberjacks it's good to know that when amberjacks are in smaller sizes they move around in really big packs and the more they grow they get less and less until they are big enough that they usually compose smaller or even solitary fish First of all, let's discuss about the season we can get it, at least in the Mediterranean, because here is where I'm located, but probably the same things happen in other parts of the world. The Greek name for Amberjack is Magiatico, and this name derives from the month May, because in the past Amberjacks were appearing in big numbers, at least in Greece, in May, in order to spawn and lay eggs. However, with the climate change, things have uh, really been upside down and even if they keep spawning in May, now you can find them all year long. I have caught amberjacks in mid-summer and I have caught amberjacks in mid-winter and of course autumn and spring. So about seasons, feel comfortable to go for them on any season. But you should be aware that they still keep their nomad habits and they move and change places and locations and come back again. So yes, you can find them for one month, next month not, and then the other month they will be still there. But this happens because of the bait fish and not from other conditions. The amberjacks are really uh, temperature resistant, even if they love uh, lukewarm waters, they don't have any problem to hunt even in the middle of the winter or in the mid-summer. So probably bait fish are exactly what you need to get and I'm going to repeat that many times in this video and I will show you examples. The good thing about Amberjack is that it is active with every weather condition. You can get Amberjacks in totally calm waters in a lake sea or you can get amberjacks in rough sea they don't 
care. They are not like other fish that they love some form. And of course, form is always an advantage for us. But for amberjacks, in general, is not the absolute must. For amberjacks, one more time, what is important are the bait fish. If bait fish are there, calm conditions or strong, they will be there. Amberjacks are hunting a wide variety of bait fish. From smaller size to bigger size, like uh, sardines, mullets, uh, bogas, of course, needlefish. They love needlefish. They love barracudas. And they love saddle brims. They love bonitos. They love uh, albacores. Whatever can fit in their mouth, they will go for it. And believe me, they have a very big stomach to <laughs> deal with any kind of prey they will get. And the awesome part is when Ambersacks hunt, they push away any other predatory fish in the area. Until they are done, all the other fish are simply watching. But there are documented times that sometimes Amberjacks cooperate with snappers or groupers in order to strike in a big pack of sardines, for example. Please also note that Amberjacks can strike from bottom to surface depending where the bait fish are. But as a general rule, they are most of the times close to the bottom. Of course, in places full of bait fish, other creatures and other predators yes, they have a party sometimes here. occur at the same time. Oh. 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 Let's see. Guys, look at this amazing creature. Look, look, look at this. Look at this amazing creature. Fighting an amberjack, as I said, needs a lot of drag pressure. I personally love to use an average of 7 kilos of raw drag pressure directly from the spool, not through the rod. That is really a lot. But sometimes even this is not enough.
Yes. No. No way. Dead. Dead. Can you help me take it? Of course. The brain, uh, the it's one one assist hook, so I think I can lift it. Yes, you can. Probably you can. Let me open the eyelid. Very good. <laughs> you deserve this fish, bro. Bro, I, I killed it, eh? You I see? You kill it. You kill it. Wow. <laughs> Very strong, eh? Very strong, but I had full drag. Yes. 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 Very good. Okay. Guys, if you like this style of video, please subscribe. These videos take a lot of time. You won't believe how much time and effort they need. So the least you can do to thank me is a subscription. Your subscription motivates me and gives me the courage to try more providing you such videos. Don't forget to subscribe. When the short jigger is going for amberjacks, and pay attention, is going to target for amberjacks, not go short jigging and maybe happen to get an amberjack. When the short jigger is going for amberjacks, is a totally different ideology. It's something unique because you are going to sacrifice many things. You are going to sacrifice hours, you are going to sacrifice by catches, you are going to walk a lot, you are going to have to crawl a lot, you are going to have to climb, you are going to have the adequate gear in order to get your target. And <laughs> sometimes or many times you are not going to be the winner, either because you won't get anything, either because you are going to get raped. A very, very, very optimistic albacore. <laughs> An albacore with a P4, <laughs> 120 gram jig, uh, 0 0.68 liter in a very hard area. <laughs> Super optimistic and uh, no fun at all. For, of course, no fun at all. But uh, it's the price to pay when you are focusing on amberjacks and big pelagics. You have a target and you only focus on that target. So you sacrifice the excitement of uh, all the other smaller fish. This uh, albacore, of course, with an MH uh, setup would be super fun, but not with an HH, absolutely not. Anyway. That's the game, let's continue. One thing you should uh, remember is that amberjacks can strike from the limit of your cast until in front of your feet. Usually in vertical walls, amberjacks will strike in the last moment in front of you, while on more progressive uh, uh, bottoms, they might attack at the limit of your cast or where the progressive uh, drop of the rocks meet the flat bottom. These are the basic uh, areas that they patrol. As I said, amberjacks have the very bad habit sometimes to attack very near the wall. 
and the deeper the area is, the more chances are to get it near the wall. Regarding jigging action, guys, Amberjack needs from you to get it pissed. You have to make it angry. Uh, Amberjack really responds in uh, fast jigging. Sometimes can be lazy and not strike well. It's a rare uh, occasion, but it does happen. Watch this. Very close. <laughs> hmm, probably a number, Zaka. Ah, come on. Why you spit? Why you spit? Ah. Mm. You are lazy, Amberjack. Guys, if you like such kind of videos, 
please comment now and tell me if you like them. It's really important to me to have your feedback. Your feedback matters so I can plan my future videos. Please comment. Regarding equipment, hmm. Guys, uh, if you really want to go for amberjacks, you should have a powerful rod, a strong reel, a strong braid, and a really abrasion resistant leader. These are the things that you really, really, really need about your basic setup. Usually, I prefer H or HH rods, SGS6H or the new SGS6HH are super strong and perfect uh, rods for this style of fishing. Reels of uh, adequate weight of uh, 650 grams up to 750 or 800 grams are uh, ideal and will give you the strength and uh, power that you need. About braid, I don't suggest to use less than PE3 and an average PE4, maximum PE5 maybe, in very very hard uh, places, very hard that you really need no drag uh, function at all and you simply have to leave the fish. And leaders, I never go for amberjacks with a leader less than 0.60 millimeter, never. I usually use 0.60 up to 0.70 and my favorite leader for amberjacks is the super hard fluorocarbon leader of Savage Gear that it's a wire, it can resist a very big damage and get the fish no matter what. And guys, regarding knots, it's super important. You cannot have a, a powerful setup with a wrong knot, absolutely not. For braid to leader knot, I prefer to use a strong PR knot. I prefer a PR knot of uh, four fingers wide. You can see how I make my PR knot on the link up here. And for the leader to solid ring, I prefer to use the MV knot, a powerful knot that sometimes it simply doesn't break, so you will break your braid sometimes even higher from the leader, but for amberjacks is the only option. You can find how I make it up here on this link. And these two knots are all you need to be sure that you can use all the drag power of your setup. And about jigs, guys, amberjacks love long and slim jigs. Ooh. <laughs> they really like the size. They need to see size. I have got more amberjacks with 100, 120, even 150 gram jigs from the shore than 60 or 80 grams. And uh, sometimes I was casting smaller jigs and when I accidentally or I just tried a bigger jig, I got a fish and a strike. Uh, that happens because, as I said earlier, amberjacks will not spend energy without a good reason. And a big jig, a long jig, like needle jig for example, that imitates a needle fish, is a good reason to go for it. So you need usually long jigs. Of course, you can get in uh, short or semi-long jigs, semi-long jigs, like Slim Jig Mino or Sardine Slider has uh, given lots of amberjacks but especially for amberjack in all uh, seasons a long jig like a needlefish has always the upper hand and here comes the assist hook guys you need a strong assist hook you need an assist hook that doesn't open and uh, about uh, position you don't care even if it's a long jig even if you have only one assist hook on the head, no problem, because amberjacks always go for the head and is one of the few fish that you have probably a 99% of a successful strike. If they strike, you get them. So yes, you can use with one assist hook in order to save some snacks on the bottom, 
but I still prefer to use two. But that's because I'm an idiot. <laughs> you can safely use only one, don't worry. I suggest usually access hooks for amber jacks of sizes 3-0, 4-0 and sometimes even 5-0 if you use a big 150 uh, gram jig for example. They don't care, they will go for it. But as you can understand with uh, a set like that you really lose other fish like uh, albacores, bonitos, uh, snappers and other fish that you could get. However, you will get groupers. They're exactly the same. They open the mouth and boom, everything inside. Guys, casting jigs above 100 grams all day, you are going to need absolutely a casting stall. I designed the Savage Gear casting stall with real leather. This is one year old. You can see how much torture it has suffered, but still exists. And this will allow you to cast really far all day. Stable, it holds very nicely the braid and protects your finger from cutting. And close, huh? Close underneath. Ah, uh, parallel.
come and simply pick it. Ah. No, I, yes, and I killed it. I really. Yes. Yeah, without a gap. No! Be careful, too. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. I want to with the gill. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, fuck. Oh fuck. This one is. Oh. 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 Never underestimate a number jack, no matter its size, don't underestimate. It has the ability to find even the slightest opportunity inside the, the sea, a rock, a coral or anything to break your leader and knows exactly what he's doing. Fighting a number jack is a totally different thing. In many other fish uh, species, we tend to use the drags. In general, short jigging is a fishing style that you don't use your real drags at all. That's a law. You really need to bring out fast your fish. However, in amberjack is probably the fish style that uh, you use less or sometimes, if possible, not at all your drags. Of course, in a case of a big uh, amberjack, no matter what you do, it will get some meters out of your reel. But where I want to end up is that if you don't have the appropriate gear and you get a nice fish in the wrong area, then you are f***ed. Watch this. I was fishing for albacores bonitos and it happened. Okay, okay. And it's a big one. Oh, fuck! Why? Ah! How is it possible? The fucking rock! It cut me on the rock! <sighs> After I finished this video, I jumped in the water to see where the hell it cut me. Here's where. <laughs> Impossible to get it out. Impossible. You will always get raped by amberjacks. You will have cuts by amberjacks. 
It's okay. I mean, it's part of the game. Don't worry. And especially about Amberjacks, don't worry about the fish because eventually it will spit the hooks. It will rub its face all day against the rocks until it sets free. On the same day, I came back with appropriate uh, setup. My H uh, rod with uh, a 5.5 thousand uh, reel, P3 braid, 60, 0.60 liter, everything was perfect. And I did everything correct. But if the bottom won't help you, you can't do anything with a fish of 10 to 15 kilos and up. Watch this. <clears throat> Impossible. Impossible. You see, if <laughs> the hard uh, positions are the worst, are the worst. Now let's see something interesting. This rock has costed me so far four amberjacks. I had to dive to see where they was cutting me, and here is where they was always striking at the deeper part and they was cutting me on this rock. So when I enter with my camera to see what's happening, then I saw exactly what the sea was wanted to tell me. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Does this look familiar? <laughs> it's like saying, hey, Marcos, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> it knows perfectly its surroundings and it will go to a rock or anything that can help it to break the leader or your braid, and it will. If it has the opportunity, it will. If Amberjack has one opportunity to go to a rock, and they always go to rocks, or expose the hard surfaces, it will go. And if you do everything correct, if you are stepping on the wrong spot, you won't get them. You simply won't get them. And when you are in positions that you feel safe and it's totally vertical, you think it's totally vertical and it is totally vertical, but it isn't totally vertical. <laughs> I will show you, I will show you. You get a fish and you have the confidence that, okay, you are, a, I have you. But eventually 
<laughs> Amberjack is the winner and not you. Watch this. Μεγάλο. Μαγιάτικο. Μαγιάτικο μάλλον. You see? Yes. On a calm day, I went down with my camera to see what the hell. Look. You see? You see this annoying uh, exposed rock? That was all it needed to do. Even if you have all the drugs of the world, if it's deeper than that, it will go boo. Bye-bye. I remember many years before, I had an Aberjack under my feet near uh, Ireon area in uh, Corinthian. And uh, I had it right under, tired, and I was waiting for a friend of mine go down and uh, hook it. However, the fish was staying uh, on the sides, on the surface tired, but these seconds were enough for that fish to take oxygen again. So suddenly it turns like that and makes a run under, taking my braid exactly under a rock. So what I did was I opened the bale so there is no tension on the braid to cut and I could see the amberjack that was thinking that was free going and strike the head on the rocks in the sea where the jig was hanging again and again and again three times and then decided to move. Then I put, uh, <laughs> I closed the bale to put drag pressure but unfortunately my line was already under a, a seashell on the, on the rocks, we call it a petalida. So immediately, tuck, it cut it. And I could see one more time the fish in the water hitting the face on the rocks to get rid of the jig. So they are very persistent and very, they are very hardcore fish. They will eventually uh, spit it. Before we start fishing on a new area, we really have to inspect the rocks in front of us. The rocks that are half inside the water and half outside. These sharp rocks usually cost a lot of fish to many anglers, especially inexperienced ones. Because you don't have the ability to walk around and be fast and sometimes fish on the last moment, they run parallel with the rocks and then you get raped and the most freaking scenario is that sometimes these rocks are hollow but you can't know you are above and you look uh, from up to down and you cannot know that it's hollow underneath and there is exactly that you are going to find out with the worst possible way so inspect before you start fishing to make a plan in your head where if you get the strike how to react and where to move. It's really important. So let's talk about bottoms. In what bottoms we would prefer to go targeting for amberjacks? Hmm. <laughs> Certainly I wouldn't go to try from a beach. Sometimes it happens, but I wouldn't go. And definitely if I get on my jig uh, dragonfish or uh, lizardfish or other fish of the sand or mud, I wouldn't uh, insist there. They might pass, of course, but definitely they won't stay to hunt. What we need are places that fish will spend some hours of the day to hunt and stay and focus there. Hunting amberjacks and passing amberjacks are two totally different things. What we need for one more time are the bait fish. If we can see that bait fish are in the area, we should insist. 
the more the bait fish are, the better. And guys, it's not only about amberjacks. If there are bait fish in the area, other predators might come and so keep that in your general sort of fishing. And for any predator fishing style involving lures, so find the bait fish. Bait fish could be all type of fish and when you see bait fish, that means that it is an alive area, an alive bottom. On the dropping walls, as I said, we're going to find mostly passing fish because also bait fish, as you can see here, are also passing and won't stay. They have nowhere to hide, so they will just, they are just passengers. Uh, a, a flat bottom is not exactly what we need because simply it doesn't keep too much life around. What we need are bottoms with uh, falling rocks. I prefer mostly progressive falling bottoms. Of course, I pay that very, very <laughs> expensive. But yes, falling bottoms with lots of rocks are places that fish live and spend uh, the day around. When currents appear, they go in the holes, then they come up out again. And amberjacks know, and when they arrive to these areas, they spend time there. If you are, for example, on a vertical spot and you stop to eat a sandwich or take a rest because you jig uh, all day with a very hard gear and it's painful, at that moment, maybe the pack of the amberjacks pass Bye bye, you lost your chance, but that won't happen in a place with a more progressive uh, falling because the amberjacks will stay to hunt. So you have more opportunities for them to eventually find your jig. Also keep in mind that sometimes what you see from the shore might be deceiving. This is an example. This is definitely a go and no go place for amberjacks. <laughs> How is it possible? It's a go because you probably will get an amberjack here, but a no go because it will definitely cut you before you say ah. <laughs> ah from amberjack. So. This is a relatively safe bottom. Even if the chances of getting a fish are less than more progressive and rocky bottoms, at least here you have good chances of getting the fish out. 
I personally love this style of bottoms. Amber Jacks don't have any problem about currents. They don't care. Sometimes you can get them in extremely strong currents because like other fish species, they will take full advantage of the currents in order to ambush or uh, successfully hunt other fish species that they don't have the same ability to overpower the strength of the moving water. Amberjacks have absolutely no problem. So, uh, you might not be able to see bait fish because of the currents, but during the change of the currents, fish will appear so you know that there are there. Here is a personal favorite. Capes like this that are cutted and deep from one side and shallow with lots of bait fish from the other side are the ones that I love most. This is a very good example. Here is shallow and full of life, but here is totally vertical and 40 meter deep. I personally love to stay here because fish Amberjacks and other species will pass over and over again. Of course, many of you know that Amberjacks love fish farms. The food that is dropping out of the cages is a reason for smaller fish to gather around this area. This is why fish farms keep lots of bait fish and that's the main reason why Amberjacks love fish farms because they can find lots of food easily. Since Amberjack is a skilled predator that can hunt around obstacles, around the ropes and around the cages, for them it's a playground full of food. So we can focus there. But we have to be sure that they allow us to fish there. In these fish farms, for example, I prefer to stay there. Amberjacks for sure will pass from these spots as they patrol the area. Especially here, that it's totally vertical with a bit of shallow around, is a perfect spot. Just make sure to stay away from the chains that hold the cages because Amberjacks are really aware of these chains, especially local Amberjacks. And once they get hooked, they will go directly on the chains. Bye bye! <laughs> Let's see another loving example. The entrance of small gulfs. Guys, gulfs are like fish farms. They always preserve a huge amount of bait fish because the currents are not strong or even absent inside them. Uh, they are protected from the waves. There are lots of holes on the surround to, to live. So yes, gulfs always attract bigger fish, especially pelagic and especially amberjacks. Amberjacks know that there is plenty of food there and they make sure to visit the gulfs several times per day. I love to stay there because it's the ideal uh, spot to wait. Eventually they will pass from that point. All you need to do is hammer hard all day until they do. And the most important, when they are in front of me, they are already in the hunting mode. So they will strike. Keep in mind that when you see the ground going in the water, usually preserves the same inclination. So when you see the mountain go like that in the water, Probably it's the same under the surface and it goes with the same inclination until it meets the bottom. Capes like this that are 400 meters, they drop in the sea with a very high inclination and they go as deep as 40 to 60 meters in the range of the cast. In these areas you can choose to stay wherever you want because you focus mostly on passing fish. Amberjacks patrol all these rocky areas up and down all day until they find the conditions to ambush passing fish. In places like that, as I said, it doesn't matter where to stay, but if you know a bit more how the currents affect the area and the times, depending the currents and the hour, I prefer to go to these places.
Yes, good. But it doesn't make any difference. I don't see we stay too much here, bro. It's too shallow. Like this is uh, better, bro. In case you want. It's a uh, all... Huh? Yeah, also here in... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now we talk. Okay, now we talk. I really don't know. Sink. Hmm. Maybe. Come on. Yes. Probably. Absolutely they are. Look. Oh, a decent one. This area I think that is a... Look it, bro. I think it's a very well. Very well, because I hooked, I hooked and I yes. pressed it. Tell me when to open the bail, eh? No, I can lift it. Yes, you lift, but I have to... Yes, but... Okay, give me a moment. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I try to do my best to give you the most important information when you go for Amberjack because Amberjack is not just another uh, catch. Amberjack is the catch. Stay tuned, many videos like this will follow. We have uh, snappers, groupers, and so many important fish. So, uh, as I said, yes, stay tuned, subscribe. Thank you very, very much for uh, supporting me, and see you soon. Bye.